Hello and welcome to ADB Thailand Times, a conversation about sustainable finance in Thailand. In this episode, we'll be talking about the challenges and opportunities of green bonds, blue bonds, and sustainable bonds. Having with us here today are two very, very special guests. Uh, the first one from the ADB, Mr. Suchi uh, Hachisumi. He is a principal investor specialist for the ADB. So what happens to the cap? A second person uh, from the Stock Exchange of Thailand, Dr. Sarapon Dulaya Satyan. Dr. Sarapon is uh, exec a senior executive vice president of the Stock Exchange of Thailand. Welcome to ADB Thailand Times. Good Thank morning. You. How good are morning. you? Good, good. In the last conversation uh, in this episode, in the previous episode, we were talking about the ecosystem of sustainable finance in Thailand. And I learned that uh, the ecosystem is, though in its infancy, but it's growing you know, uh, steadily, right? So today we're probably going to be talking a little bit deeper you know, on the product itself and also the challenge and the opportunities that the market has for the, for the blue bonds and green bonds. Yep. Uh, blue bonds and green bonds are very powerful tools in order to help government and private sector mobilize finance into low carbon projects, right? However, uh, these two bonds are relatively new. I wonder you know, how much of the Thai market actually understand you know, these bonds and do they really understand the unique benefits that this bond brings? Maybe you know, I'll, I'll throw the first question to you first, Dr. Sarapan. Uh, green bond and blue bond are example of uh, the green finance and it is quite new in Thailand uh, as well as the world actually. I think uh, there are many uh, interesting uh, attractiveness of this uh, investment uh, as a tool uh, because uh, as you know, as we all know that uh, sustainability is now a trend. Uh, it used to be that uh, when people do things on this front, uh, they would do it for uh, more like a, uh, showing that the, the company care about environment, about the social and governance. But in the recent time, uh, people view sustainable investment as a tool for companies uh, to risk manage themselves because there's like a checklist mm -hmm. that a company need to concern uh, about environment, about their labor right, human right, about their transparency, about their disclosure. And without the checklist, it's become risky that a uh, company might overlook some risk that uh, could eventually cause uh, some damage uh, if something happened. So the sustainability issue become more like a risk management. But then, in even more recent time, uh, there are uh, some evidence that a company that care about this issue uh, uh, have the another open door of opportunities for them to do uh, business with uh, consumers and investors start to care more about this issue. People, uh, when they purchase goods, uh, they start to look for, you know, like the carbon footprint. My wife, for example, when they actually go to grocery, they look for like, labor issue, uh, sustainable source, uh, coffee, for example. Yeah. So when, when consumers start to uh, pay attention to this, this issue, a company that focus on these issues uh, will have another unique opportunity for business. Mm -hmm. So you can see the shift between uh, something that uh, nice to do, you know, like company nice to have the sustainability focus, become something that uh, you must do because mm -hmm. uh, more regulation, more the global pressure, and now it shift again to something that uh, want to do because mm -hmm. uh, if you do these things, it become uh, another. Uh, business opportunity. Back to the uh, the green finance option. So the green finance is a way to uh, company to send signals that, hey, I'm doing this issues, and uh, you will attract a, a certain investor that uh, want to finance company that does that. So it sounds like both the market and the consumers have a good understanding of of the tools, right, and the importance of the tool to drive the low carbon projects. I would say that have uh, the, the uh, in-depth understanding. I would say that uh, they have uh, desire to invest in such product. We still need to uh, uh, build up the ecosystem uh, from both demand and supply side. Uh, the market is still new, but it has a lot of potential. Uh, 
uh, on the supply side, of course, uh, I just told you that it's a business opportunity for company to do. So basically, we, we need to show them uh, uh, what are the good practice that uh, other company does it. For example, if you want to do something like uh, the, uh, the energy saving, mm. uh, what does this company do and how can this best practice be shared to others? Uh, we want to have a, create a community of the practitioner so that they can share uh, among each other. Uh, we want to uh, create a community of the investors because a lot of investors want to invest but uh, they don't know what framework they should use mm. or what kind of uh, data source or what, how to evaluate uh, such investment. Uh, we want to create the uh, professional because uh, there's a lot of professional in the capital market that need to involve, uh, for example, the uh, analyst mm. uh, need to be able to uh, analyze uh, this is a good opportunity or not, is it very green or not, right. very blue or not. Uh, we want to create the uh, professional such as the uh, investor relation because sometimes uh, company that do a lot of things but they need to be able to communicate to right. the uh, outside company to the investor specifically on what the company do. Uh, the accounting, uh, they sometimes they require uh, how much carbon footprint does this product has? It's a lot of number yeah. to crunch. From that, uh, from the stock exchange perspective, uh, we engage in in uh, every spot of the ecosystem. We try to uh, build up the uh, capability of the companies. Right. We try to create community of the practitioner. Right. We try to uh, understand the framework for investment from the investor side and we build up the data uh, that flow from the company that does it mm. through the investor that uh, use it to invest as well as the professional right. uh, to, to, to help uh, with the investment. That's quite comprehensive. I think you did mention about demand and supply, right? Uh, my next question though is going to be focusing a little bit more on the supply side, maybe in Kun Suchi. You know, from the supply side, you know, the issuer side, right? Um, if I want to issue, you know, let's say blue bond, right? Or, or green bonds or any type of sustainable bonds, right? Usually, uh, what are the requirements? What are the prerequisites you know, mm -hmm. that, that one would have to be able to show to the potential investor or maybe to the stock exchange that we are eligible. You know, I heard the story about you know people issuing you know um, sustainable bonds you know for a not so good reason for greenwashing, for example. Right? How can we make sure that with that criteria that we're gonna set that who should be eligible? Can we also use the very same criteria to keep the bad actor away from the market? Yeah, sure. So um, when we say green, blue, or other type of uh, sustainable uh, bond, um, it includes uh, those uh, uh, which are kind of uh, um, self-declared to those which fall, follow the international best practice. From developmental institutions like ADB, we always uh, uh, push for international best practice. Now, uh, uh, specifically, uh, let's start with the green bond. Um, there are several internationally well-recognized uh, uh, principles and uh, guidelines. Uh, one of them is uh, a green bond uh, principle by uh, International Capital Market Association. And another one is a climate uh, bond uh, guideline uh, by uh, the Climate uh, uh, Bond uh, Initiative. Uh, these are the two uh, main uh, globally accepted uh, standards. Then there is uh, also some others uh, such as uh, um, ASEAN green bond principle. Uh, this follows uh, the, the green uh, bond principle by uh, International Capital Market Association, but it's a, a regional initiative in mm -hmm. ASEAN uh, to encourage uh, issuers uh, to go for uh, green bond and other sustainable bond uh, issues. Um, so these are uh, um, well-recognized uh, uh, principles and guidelines. Uh, there are several uh, requirements to uh, satisfy or follow. Uh, one is uh, project uh, identification. So there are certain uh, eligibility criteria. Um, so for green bond, uh, um, uh, you have to uh, allocate the use of proceeds mm. to those projects that will contribute to sustainability or, or carbon emission reduction, um, such as uh, um, a renewable energy project. 
solar, wind, uh, geothermal, um, uh, small hydro. Um, energy efficiency, uh, also eligible, and uh, uh, sustainable transport, uh, also eligible. These can be categorized as a climate uh, mitigation in the, um, the sustainability terminology. Uh, climate uh, adaptation uh, projects for um, uh, resilience to climate change and disaster and so on. These uh, would also be uh, eligible. So this is one important uh, principle for the use of PROCI. Now, in addition to this, uh, this international um, best practice uh, also uh, require the issuers to follow the management of fund flow and also to monitor um, that these funds uh, continue to be allocated to this eligible project during the life of the bond. Um, so uh, these are the key uh, requirements. And then uh, another aspect is uh, um, whether you have a third party uh, verification or not. This is not necessarily a requirement uh, to be eligible for green bond, uh, but we always uh, recommend the issuers to follow um, third party independent verification uh, for quality assurance and uh, transparency. By the way, I think uh, I have uh, mostly talked about the green bond in this case, but the, talking about the blue bond, uh, blue bond can be considered as a subset of a green bond. Um, I think uh, Dr. Zraplan has uh, already mentioned that the green bond um, is uh, um, relatively well uh, recognized uh, in the market uh, um, uh, already, but the blue bond is also increasing, but new um, asset class. So the, the recognition awareness is uh, lower than green bond. To be eligible for the blue bond, um, in addition to these uh, green bond requirements, uh, it specifically has to um, address um, ocean health issues, um, ecosystems, uh, um, the waste reduction, uh, and so on. Um, so if the, the project uh, uh, contributes to these uh, um, uh, ocean health sustainability issues, uh, then uh, those bonds can be eligible uh, as, a, as a blue bond. Follow-up question, um, can you give us an example of the recent issuance of these bonds that maybe ADB has been you know, part of the issuance or supporting the issuance? Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, actually um, uh, back in 2018, uh, that was uh, the, the year when Thai market really started to um, take off for green uh, bond and the sustainable bond. Um, we helped the uh, um, utility company Be Green uh, to issue um, the first uh, green bond in Thailand uh, for energy utility uh, company to issue the bond of that kind. Uh, that was the first one. Uh, then the following year, uh, we also helped uh, Energy Absolute, uh, another utility company, to issue a uh, green bond. This uh, issuance uh, was successful and uh, well accepted by the market. I think it gave uh, more uh, awareness and confidence mm -hmm. to various uh, issuers uh, um, to, to go for a uh, green bond. So there are requirements, but that they can um, satisfy. It's not too complex. Mm -hmm. uh, they have to follow the guidelines, but it's uh, possible to manage. On the blue bond side, uh, um, uh, actually it was a blue loan rather than a, a blue bond, uh, but ADB was uh, a lender to uh, Indrama Ventures, mm. um, a petrochemical giant headquartered uh, in, in Thailand, to expand their uh, PT recycling capacity so that the, the waste, plastic waste uh, dumped into the ocean will be reduced. Uh, this will qualify as a blue loan. So it was a loan, but we did a blue loan with uh, Indrama Ventures.